The time is 6-12. We have the presence of a quorum, and this meeting has been duly called. A notice of the meeting has been posted for the time and manner required by law. Uh, our first order of business are the Pledges of Allegiance, so I'd like to invite the Bowie Middle School students up to the microphone to lead us in the pledges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now for the Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. If you could remain standing now for a silent invocation. Thank you, you may be seated. Our next item of business is recognitions. Dr. Dupree. Thank you, Mrs. James. If the board would join me in front of the dais, we have a couple of very special recognitions this evening. Thank you, Dr. Dupree. First, we'd like to recognize the officers of the Bowie Middle School National Junior Honor Society um, who led the Pledges of Allegiance. First, Toyin Banjo. She is president of the National Junior Honor Society and participates in drama, basketball, and tutors other students in academics. Audrey McLaughlin is the Vice President of the National Junior Honor Society and her platform is serving special needs students. Nicole Oyame Luque is the National Junior Honor Society Secretary and she wants to study engineering. <laughs> Tosin Banjo is the treasurer of the National Junior Honor Society and she is very active in drama. Taylor Sweat is co-historian and the current sports reporter for KBOW-TV at Bowie. And finally, co-historian co-historian Cody Westmoreland and he is the president of the orchestra. <laughs> Will you join me in congratulating these students? They did a great job. School Board Recognition Month is observed in Texas each January to build awareness among our citizens about the important and vital role that an elected Board of Education plays in our society. Fort Bend ISD is proud to recognize and express its sincere appreciation to the members of our Board of Trustees. There are seven individuals who have a strong and unyielding commitment to doing what is best for the children in our district. By contributing countless hours of time, our board members work to ensure that our educational system is governed in the most effective and efficient manner possible with the best interests of students at heart. Please join us in recognizing our Fort Bend ISD Board of Trustees. Grail James, President. <laughs> Dave Rosenthal, Vice President. Jenny Bailey, Secretary. 
and board members, Jason Burdine. KP George. Jim Rice. And Kristen Tessin. In addition, we all want to express our sincere appreciation to the families of the board members who give up valuable family time when board members are away from home to conduct business. We'd like to thank all of you. And at this time, we have a special presentation for you tonight by art students from across our district. At this time, I want to introduce uh, Jim Drew, Fort Bend ISD Director of Fine Arts, who will tell you a little bit about our special gifts that were made using selected artwork from our talented students. each board member. Also, as the students go up to present their gifts, the students' teachers will be displaying each child's original artwork that served as the inspiration for the board gifts. I would like to recognize these teachers who work with these students every day. So please stand when I say your name. Donna Reedy. <laughs> Beth Agar. Carol Houlihan, <laughs> Jana Hoke, <laughs> Bethany Bland, <laughs> Beryl Blaylock Hume, <laughs> and I want to give a special thanks to Joan Marsh, our fine arts coordinator, who facilitated the selection and reproduction of these students' artworks. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Jim. I'm going to call the names of the students, and they have a special um, gift for each board member. First, to honor board president, Grail Jaynes, Tr Trisha Gupta will come forward with her special gift, and, w and she's going to help us with another one, too. Trisha created her artwork as a junior last year at Clements High School, and her piece is titled Fish. <laughs> and she's going to help us. Our next student could not be here. Um, Tricia, would you bring forward, we have a gift for Board Vice President Dave Rosenthal. It was created by Jessica, Jessica Suarez and she created a piece called Topsy Turvy. And Tricia, could you please stay up there? And that was last year as a 10th grade student at Hightower High School. <laughs> to honor board secretary, Raina Horn will come forward with a gift for Miss Bailey. Raina is currently a freshman at Austin High School and, and attended Garcia Middle School last year when she created her piece entitled Rainbow Bikes. <laughs> to honor board member Kristen Tassin, Madison Alexander will come forward with a special gift. Madison is a fifth grade student at Sugar Mill Elementary, and she is presenting a piece called Big Stripes. Thank you, Madison. <laughs> to honor board member Jim Rice, Cal Rusa will come forward with his special gift for Mr. Rice, 
Kyle was a fifth grade student at a Siena Crossing when he created his artwork entitled Alamo. He is now a sixth grade student at Baines Middle School. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> to honor board member KP George, Savannah Mendive will come forward with her special gift for Mr. George. Savannah is a freshman at Travis High School and created her work artwork Spitfire when she was in eighth grade at Bowie Middle School. Thank you, Sienna. Savannah. <laughs> to honor board member Jason Verdine, Vishwa Venkasin will come forward with a special gift for Mr. Verdine. Vishwa created Rainbow Sunset as a fourth grade student at Austin Parkway. Thank you. And finally, we didn't want to leave out our superintendent, Charles Debris. Megan Halfin, will you please come forward with your gift for Dr. Debris? Megan is now a third grade student at Dulles Elementary, and last year she created a piece of art entitled Jazz. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> and if everybody could remain standing, we're going to try and take a photo. <laughs> this time's the charm. Okay. All right. All right. In concluding our presentation, we want to recognize the parents of these talented students. So if you're a parent, would you please stand so we can recognize you? <laughs> that concludes this part of our board rec recognition, Dr. Dupree, and we want to thank everyone who made, that po made it possible. So I'll make a couple of remarks before the board sits back down because I think it's important. You know, often um, it's kind of like in families. We work together. We spend a lot of time together, but we don't always take time, especially publicly, to be able to express appreciation. And so I think it's a very special occasion, especially since our students are here, to just I, – I just got a couple of comments here that I think it's important that our community hear. You know, we had 51 board meetings during the last year. You think about what that means. That's almost one per week. That's over 204 hours or eight and a half full days spent in board meetings. That means, as we mentioned already, time away from family, friends, and other activities, your jobs, and all of those things that you need to be doing in addition to this volunteer work. You also spend hours in addition to the meeting times preparing for the meetings, reading the volumes of materials that we send you, and this year, it's been a lot of materials, and you all have done an excellent job of keeping up with that. Thousands of emails, and I don't think that that is overstating the number of emails the board has gotten. They read them and reply to many, many of them. They sat through 11 high school graduations at an average of two hours apiece. That's 22 hours of graduations with a smile and thrilled to be there to support our students. 
hundreds and hundreds of community activities, everything from the Chamber of Commerce to fundraising events and all kinds of activities in this community. And then you add in all the school activities, all the sports events, the fine arts concerts, the plays, um, science, you know, science fairs, hundreds of events to be there with our students and our staff. Thousands of handshakes and hug. And one of the most important numbers is zero. Not one penny of compensation is paid for any of it. In fact, many of you pay to do this job by running and putting your own money toward your campaign. You fight campaigns in the community against opponents to win these seats, and then you give us all of this time and investment of, I would literally say, blood, sweat, and tears at times to help lead Fort Bend Independent School District. So I just want you to know how much I appreciate you, and I like the community to know, you know, I probably spend more time with these folks than anybody. I get to see them in behind closed doors, in open session. I get to see them at their worst and at their best. And the good news is the children that you see in front of you here and the 72,000 children in our schools are always their top priority. No matter what decision we're making, they care first about doing what's right and best for the children in this community. And it is a privilege and an honor to work with a board that is willing to make the children the priority, even when it means having to make very hard decisions, one of which we're faced with tonight. So I just want to publicly say thank you, board. It's a pleasure to work with you. And I look forward to the next year and appreciating you again next year. So thank you.
going. Is that all right? Ladies and gentlemen, if everybody can find a seat. <coughs> One more seat down there. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. May I have your attention, please? Before the meeting gets, begins, we ask that everyone silence your cell phones. The Fort Bend ISD Board of Trustee meeting is an open meeting to the public to observe the board during, it, during, dip, <coughs> excuse me, during conducting district business. Therefore, patrons may address the board during the designated audience item section on the agenda. If you have any printed materials you want to give to the board members, you must provide them to the board secretary, Jane Kaiser, or to me, and we will provide them to the board. We also have that members of the audience be respectful of others, remain quiet during the meeting so everyone is able to hear the proceedings. For your convenience, microphones have been provided on both sides of the board room. Please speak directly into the microphone if you are asked to answer a question or address the board during the board meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Officer Ontiveros. Uh, we'll get right into the audience items now. Our first speaker <coughs> is Jingqing Ling. There he is. President James, Dr. Dupre, um, Board of Trustees. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak here. I'm from Creekstone Village. At the board meeting on December the 15th, I represented residents in Creekstone Village and Brookside to request your consideration to keep us under ES 47 and Fort Settlement Middle School. We are really thrilled to learn that our request of change is now recommended in the current field pattern and boundary plan. This simply shows that you have really listened to our voice and cared about our concerns. It is also a perfect example that the whole process of field pattern alignment is truly transparent and data-oriented and really serves the ultimate goal to create the best learning environment for Fort Bend ISD students. So according to our previous data analysis, we think that keeping Chris Kitson Village and Brookside under ES 47 and Fort Settlement will provide the opportunity to save the school district $2 million in expenses, will maintain the neighborhood concept in Riverstone, will help uh, increase the utilization of the school capacity and allow future growth, and it will keep students' travel short and safe. So we're glad that according to the ISD administration, our analysis has now been fully supported by the latest PASA projections. At this point, please allow me to express our highest gratitude for your tremendous efforts and sacrifice from family time and also our strongest support for the current feeder pattern and boundary plan. As residents in Creekstone Village and Brookside, we will stand united as we have done throughout the process of feeder pattern alignment and strive to ensure smooth and successful implementation of the current plan, which we think will provide the best opportunity 
for our students to learn and which will also challenge them to reach their full potential and which will prepare them for a more competitive world. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Joe Tekhanoff. Inspector, members of the Fort Bend ASD Board of Trustees uh, and Dr. Dupre. My name is Joe Tekhanoff. Thank you for providing me the opportunity to speak. On behalf of the entire community of Creekstone Village and Brookside, I would like to express our sincere gratitude to Fort Bend AST administration for listening to our concerns around the feeder pattern and boundary change proposals and so on as into ES 47 and uh, Fort Settlement Middle School. We understand that it, it has been a long process. We all appreciate the diligent efforts put in by all of you to study and understand the requirements of the community, seek feedback and consider appropriate recommendations. Your approach has demonstrated that you have the best interest of our children in your mind, that you are willing to adapt and adopt solutions that best meet the needs of our community. The residents of our two communities are extremely pleased with the recommendation made by Fort Bend AST administration to zone our two communities into ES 47 and Fort Settlement Middle School. And we, we are very thankful for considering our valuable points such as the continuity of our children, maintaining the spirit of one community concept, and the sense of, um, and ensuring the optimal and safe uh, drive to optimal and safe drive to school and opportunity to save $2 million. And these highly appropriate recommendations. Thank you again for the time and consideration and patiently listening to our voice and concerns and making recommendation which will benefit our children and Fort Bend AST. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next, spe our next speaker is Carlene Robinson. Good evening, Dr. Dupree, uh, Board of Trustee members. My name is Carlene Robinson, and I have a Global Studies Academy freshman. My reason here, usually I'm in the background cheering others on, but I feel today that I need to be here to speak to all of you and point out some things that I think, just point out some points. First, I just want to say that the forced transfer of the Global Studies Academy uh, freshman class is unfair and unjust. Second, there is no real plan for making the GSA move to, to Travis. You have acknowledged that the placement of the academies was not a consideration during the development of recommendations. And my question is, why not? The 205 academy freshmen that are being affected by this move are Fort Bend ISD students, and they require the same consideration and planning as all the other Fort Bend ISD students. When we began the process of determining where my daughter would attend school, there were a lot of different uh, factors that we considered, location, travel time, uh, curriculum level, college preparedness, and then when she decided that she wanted to attend college abroad, Clemens Global Studies Academy was the perfect school for her. The combination of Clemens and the Global Studies Academy is what makes this Global Studies Academy program what it is today. As an academy parent, I would like to see a credible and well thought out plan which shows how the transplanted Global Studies Academy program will work. Anything less is unfair and unjust. 
The decision to attend an academy is not a whim. It was not a whim for these students to uh, attend this academy. It is unfair to unroot, uproot them when they have just begun to acclimate themselves within their schools and academic classes. And the idea that the current freshmen are going to uh, mentor the incoming, seconds. incoming freshmen is not realistic and it's an insult to our intelligence. This should not be a trial and error process. Please demonstrate that the Fort Bend ISD Board of Trustees is indeed fair, just, and impartial by grandfathering the current ninth grade academy class. Thank you. I'll just remind the audience, please do not interrupt us by this applause because we're trying to move through these and hear it, give to everyone a chance to speak. So I'd like you to be respectful. Uh, our next speaker is Aparna. I, it's hard for me to read this to say, maybe. I apologize. This is a little blurry on my page. I was? Awesome. <laughs> Yay. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, honorable board members, Dr. Dupre, and Fort Bend ISD administrators. My son is a current ninth grader at the Clemens GSA program. <coughs> Your recent decision of not grandfathering the academy kids, which is offered to the rezone kids, has made us all feel unequal. Sorry. Dr. Dupre, at the BOT workshop, you stated your reasoning for moving the ninth graders next year was mentoring and HB5. Based on parent input, it is questionable how many kids will move to Travis. Where then are your mentors? Even if they do move, they themselves will be new to Travis. Depressed, dejected, and a coordinator split among three campuses with little faith in the administration. How could they make for good mentors? As for HB5, don't all ninth graders have to be compliant? Why then this discrimination? Where is the fairness in all of this? I plead for you to rethink your decision and please grandfather the ninth grade class to Clemens. This will solve the whole problem with current freshmen moving and starting over at another school. A transition from middle school is always difficult, especially after choosing between high schools and academies. We put a lot of thought into this decision, and amongst all the options, Yash chose the GSA at Clemens. Now that he has settled into his new environment and you made new friends that are both from the GSA, and the rezoned kids, and the zoned kids, I'm sorry, ninth graders and his seniors, he's being dragged out of Clemens and pushed into a new high school which he knows nothing of. How unfair is that? Yash plays the violin and is part of the Clemens' second highest orchestra and is working very hard to audition for the varsity Clemens Chambers Orchestra. With your decision, he does not even get to see success after all his efforts. When Yash was selected for the all-region orchestra, he proudly represented Clemens High School. He has set up a rapport with the orchestra director, Mrs. Wolf, and Mr. Springer. He now has to give all that up and start over, proving himself at a different high school. Yash is also part of the debate team where he represents Clemens and has won awards at competitions, proudly being a ranger. He has been teaming up with some seniors for public forum debates and looks forward to being a championship debater and representing the Rangers at state and national levels. He is growing and progressing under the tutelage of Ms. Johnson. He's involved in the Model seconds. UN and is committed to the success of the Rangers and Model UN competitions. All of this changes if you were to not grandfather him in Clemens. He has already given his loyalty to the Clemens Rangers and formed a bond with his teachers. Please don't make him give it up and force him to pick a school he has no loyalties to. Again, I plead for you to grandfather the current freshman academy students, just like you have the rezoned freshmen. Be fair and consistent in your treatment of all our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is, our next speaker is Jay Kumar Bahati. Superintendent Dupre. You can take and, that uh, up a little bit if that's more comfortable for you. There you go. There you go. That better. Good. Distinguished board members, I'm here tonight to voice my deep concerns 
oh, we're moving current GSA freshman kids to Travis High School next year. My ninth grade daughter is enrolled in the GSA at Clements. Uh, the current proposal to move freshman GSA would adversely impact my daughter and other freshman kids. My daughter will, this will result in her third school change in three years. And she's just integrated into the Clements High School and now she's been told she has to change again. All this turmoil and uncertainty the last few months is taking its toll. And kids are under siege from uh, various forces beyond their control. And now it feels like she and her entire class is being sacrificed for no apparent gain. And furthermore, they are not being afforded equal treatment. That's a big concern. Why should they be forced to change schools when no other freshman student in the entire district has been asked to do the same? These kids have done everything asked of them except finish at the school they started. Parents assumed they would finish at the school they started and finally, and family made decisions around this. Moving them now is unfair. My daughter is actively engaged in several extracurricular activities at Clements, uh, tennis, student council, international club, and orchestra. The short distance from our home makes it all possible since we can easily pick her up after school. Travis is at least one hour round trip for us. With another child in elementary school, we simply cannot sustain our activities. In fact, my son is here today doing his homework and my daughter is at the student council meeting at Clemens School. Um, she'll have to, I mean, for her, she'll have to walk away from her extracurricular activities, uh, which are really essential in a well-rounded development and would adversely affect her future. Why she and other GSA freshmen being asked to make these sacrifices when no one else is being asked to do the same. I ask you to treat GSA freshmen kids fairly, like other kids, and grandfather them into graduating from Clemens. I also ask you to delay moving the GSA to 2016-2017 school year. With only a few months to go, unknown teachers, inadequate coordinator staffing, you're setting them up for failure by moving GSA now. The individual board members' major responsibility is to study, evaluate, and deliberate the policies, issues confronting his or her district, then to vote on the best interest of all students. A vote to move GSA freshman kids to Travis is not in the interest of all students. Where is the fairness and the equal treatment? That's time. Please Thank grandfather you, the GSA freshman class. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir, for being here tonight. Our next speaker is Joseph Bobayan. Bob uh, Ian? Sorry. I'm Joe Babian, parent of a wonderful third and seventh grader here in Fort Ben ISD. Thank you to the board for allowing me to speak tonight. I'm discussing the proposal by board member Jenny Bailey as made at the January 12th board meeting, where she suggested that the Lake Olympia community be rezoned from Lake Olympia Middle School to the Quail Valley Middle School. I'm discussing this proposed change in view of the impact on the Quail Valley Middle School, GT Academy. This change will move approximately 161 students from the Lake Olympia zone into Quail Valley Middle School, possibly resulting in fewer spaces available to house the GT Academy students now and in the future. Zone students do take precedence, and the GT Academy students who are not zoned to Quail Valley Middle School will be cut if space isn't available. According to the district hired consultants, it is not necessary to rezone these students and the district consultants did not make or support this recommendation. This idea is from one board member, Mrs. Jenny Bailey. At the January 12th board meeting, member Bailey questioned the district demographer's numbers and ability while jumping in with this new idea. This appears to be a last minute move to fill more seats within the non-academy part of Quail Valley Middle School and thus squeeze out existing Quail Valley Middle School GT Academy students now and in the future. In other words, the more zoned students at Quail Valley Middle School, the less space for non-zoned Academy students. This is very convenient and not transparent. We all need to question Board Member Bailey's credentials for overruling Sir, the district... Excuse me for interrupting you. If you could refrain from using her name, that would be appreciated. 
We all need to question this board member's credentials for overruling the district consultant as well as the previous community input recommendations, and more importantly, this board member's rationale for suggesting the change. I ask that this board stops trying to end the academy programs via death by a thousand cuts and be more transparent. The Fort Bend community has already spoken in support of the academies quite clearly, but it seems this board didn't entirely get the message. It is up to you all to decide what is going on and take appropriate steps as you see fit. Thank you, Mr. Dupre, for listening tonight. Our next speaker is Ms. Dolores Collins. I'm not speaking about academies. I'm here to speak about Willow Ridge High School. Um, I, I looked at page 7 and 20 in the package for the boundaries and the feeder pattern changes. Although I now understand the rationale for changing four communities from the Willow Ridge feeder pattern, I do still think it's going to have a dramatic effect on Willow Ridge. When you take out a community like uh, Chasewood, which is a stable community with more homeowners as opposed to renters, with higher income parents and uh, more two-parent households, we, we know those are some components for stability in students. And when you take that from our community, which is a struggling school, it hurts. I, like I say, I understand the rationale in trying to keep the feeder patterns going from elementary to middle school to high school. It's just that that, that is a blow for Willow Ridge. Um, with House Bill 5 and the new changes that are to, uh, to come from that, since Willow Ridge and Marshall only have seven of these career paths or whatever you call it, uh, and other schools have 20 to 26, I believe is the number. I really hope that presidents will be given to these two schools for initiating those changes as soon as school starts so that we could see some improvements in courses offered for our students so that they're not just taking reading, writing, and arithmetic. They need some other things to take. They need more uh, classes and courses and choices. Maybe that will help also. Right now, Willow Ridge is being inundated with students from HISD and ALEAF. And many of those students come with lots of challenges and for our administration and our teachers. And uh, they take time sometimes to acclimate themselves to Fort Bend ways. So we have to deal with that in addition to uh, students who are uh, low 30 performing. seconds. Okay. So please uh, make sure that when we do House Bill 5 that we really do give precedence to these two schools. Thank you very much. I have another meeting to attend. Thank you, Mrs. Collins. <laughs> our, next, our next speaker is Wen Jun Chu. Dr. Dupree and the distinguished board, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. The district-wide rezoning has been a long process. The decision time has finally arrived. Never before in Fort Bend ISD history has the community been able to participate to this extent. Dr. Dupree, the Followed by the ISD Edmund and along with the seven board members. Your diligence, your dedication, and the student-centered focus highly impressed us. Your service to this community will be remembered for years to come. A large number of parents got involved in this process no matter how much we disagree with each other. The main purpose is 
We care about our children's education. Now is the time to make the decision. We urge the board to vote yes to these final recommendations so our district to move forward and put this process behind us. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Our next speaker is Maya Shire. There he is. Didn't see you. Hi, how are you this evening? Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, members of the board, Dr. Dupree. Uh, you know, when this process first started out, it was a whole learning experience for many of us. Uh, given what I've learned about the history of the board and its interaction with the community, when you first came out with a recommendation, I, I didn't know it was a recommendation. I thought that was it. And the learning process has been the interactive dialogue going back and forth and really commend you on that. It was the first time I gathered it's happened in a long time. And it's uh, a rough analogy I was making to a few folks. It's like asking your kids what they want for dinner. And you're going to get a number of responses back. And eventually, someone might be a little happier and somebody a little less happier. But uh, no one quite remembers the fact that you asked. And over time, I think that's a far more constructive process to continually engage. As I recall, at the last board meeting, uh, there was something, noticed something over 18,000 surveys filled out. That is a lot of surveys from a lot of communities. And what I hope over time is it was, I think, fairly concentrated in a handful of communities. And this might be the first time as we go through that on an ongoing basis that you have dialogue. Hopefully, there's a broader range of community interaction. So there are more surveys coming from a wide ranging number of communities. But really appreciate the fact that you have the dialogue to begin with. And I think as we kind of get through tonight, uh, when people take a step back to look at it, people will appreciate the fact that you at least engage in that dialogue where there might not have been one before. We urge you to go through tonight's process and get through the recommendation so that we can all move on and plan for kids for the fall. But at the same time, just wanted to thank you for all the effort uh, that you've taken. It's not an easy process by any uh, stretch of the imagination. And I'm sure you've had a thousand different viewpoints coming at you. But we really do appreciate the time and effort. Uh, we know in many ways it's a thankless job, but you undertook it. And we do deeply appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you Our next speaker is Mr. Jay Clancy. It says Jay Clancy again. Is that, <laughs> I thought I, there's only one Jay Clancy, I thought. And they're allowed to clap for me, right? No, we're, we're <laughs> trying to keep things moving here. Thank you. We're Stay not supposed to be, I'm taking up time by just talking to you, so <laughs> go ahead. All right, my name is Jay Clancy. As you know, I represent the Commonwealth Subdivision. And last time I was here, I held up a t-shirt saying, don't crowd us out. And I still mean that, but I got a new t-shirt design that I want to propose to all of us tonight. <laughs> I like the tie-dye. Thank you. It has all the colors in it. There have been a lot of things that have been said. Mm -hmm. There have been a lot of things that have been said to all of us on, to, both in the board meetings and behind the scenes on different online sites. And I know there's a lot of feelings around all of us about the way that things are going right now. And to be honest, I'm a little scared too. But I've heard... The administration say that they've already heard us about overcrowding. I've seen you guys, we've asked for numbers and you gave us numbers that were well more detailed than I could have expected. And I've heard several board members say that we're not, you're not ready to break feeder patterns at work. So I'm ready to go on faith. I'm ready to say that this board has spent a lot of time looking at these things. And I think that you guys are doing a great job. So for now, I'm not telling everybody just to, to let go. I'm not telling everybody to stop being vigilant. We need to stay vigilant. And I've seen a lot of energy happen here over the last few months that if we could channel that energy, we'd have an amazing school system, even better than we have right now. So my request to you guys, to all of us, is let's, now let's trust the board and move forward and start building our, our, start building our school system rather than fighting over it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clancy. Our, la our last speaker tonight is Anu Krishnan.
Um, good evening, members of the board and Dr. Dupree. Uh, my name is Anu Krishnan, and I'm the mother of a sophomore at the Global Studies Academy in Clements. Uh, first off, I want to thank you all for the hard work that you put in as board members and uh, the many tireless hours you spend uh, debating many difficult issues. So thank you for that. But as the GSA moves to Travis, we as GSA parents have several concerns that I'd like to, to voice today. So I had the opportunity to talk to uh, Dr. Whitbeck at the Elkins uh, feeder pattern meeting and asked her to ask her if she could share the plan for running dual academy programs for multiple years. And her response to me was, that's being worked by the local principals, you know, it'll come in due course. The concern we have as current parents is, uh, current GSA parents at Clemens is, are you going to penalize the current kids at Clemens at the expense of opening up a new academy in Travis? So it appears that the board does not, uh, the district does not have a, a real concrete plan at the moment to run two academies for multiple years. The GSA used to have a dedicated uh, coordinator until, until this year. This year we split it with the International Business and Marketing Academy and we can see the effect of having a coordinator that's split, split across two programs. The same coordinator is now going to be split across four programs. There's going to be an old GSA at Clemens, a new GSA at Travis, an old IBMA at Travis, I'm sorry, a new, uh, 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 an old IBMA at Travis and a new um, IBMA at, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm mixing it up, but you know what I mean. So there's going to be two academies in Clemens, I mean, there's going to be one academy in Clemens, one academy in Bush, and two academies in Travis that the single coordinator is going to have to manage. And that's going to be physically impossible for anyone. Not to mention that the driving distance between those two schools is about 30 minutes. So it's not easy for teachers and coordinators to drive back and forth. Another keystone of the GSA program is the foreign languages, and we have six foreign languages in Clemens today. Travis only offers two. So Travis only has, I believe, um, French and Spanish. And, and, and all the other languages that Clemens offers, we're not sure if you're going to offer the same things at Travis, and we're not sure how you're going to split those, those courses between the two schools. I mean, teachers for languages like Latin aren't easy to find. You're not going to be able to find them you know, in a, in a very short span of time. So you really need to give this some due consideration. Um, academies are always cited as portable, which means the live-in population always seems to get more priority. And the one thing I want to remind you all is that neighborhoods like Telfair and Riverstone became live-in populations way after the academies 30 were there. seconds. So you need to think through, you know, if you're going to keep these academies portable, are they going to be portable always? And are you going to run multiple programs over multiple years, right? So you're, you're, you, there's the Academy Expo is tomorrow. Given all these questions you have about running dual programs, what are you going to tell new parents, freshman parents coming in for the GSA program? You know, are you expecting them to put the, their faith in you and say, you know, we'll just figure it out? Because I, as a parent, if I had the option at this moment and my child was a freshman, I wouldn't be Time. having them apply to, to GSA at Travis because there's that, so many unanswered your questions. Time has expired. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Krishnan. Thank you for being here. That concludes the audience items portion of our agenda. Uh, our board will now convene in closed se uh, session under the Texas Open Meetings Act for, a private, for the purpose of a private consultation with the board's attorney on any or all subjects or matters as authorized by law. The board's now convene in closed session. <laughs>